Go check this out. All so right. this is Jayster. Jayster, welcome to Feel the Wrath podcast. What's up, bro? How you doing, Carl? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Chilling, man. Just fucking, you know, living life and doing what I do. <laughs> A long time. Hell yeah. Since we went to the skate park, man. That no, actually... The last time I remember I saw you was at Kindred's Remembrance at the Woods oh, yeah. in the Alameda. That's right, man. That was what, nine years ago, I think? Fucking 2012. The funny thing is my bro- my wife's brother died like three months later. And oh, I, was, wow. I was at the same fucking funeral home, man. It's yeah. just sucks, but Sorry, man. Yeah, rest in peace, Kindred, man. Yeah, fucking absolutely. Hell yeah. Oh, gee. Hell, absolutely. Fuck yeah. Uh, so... So let's go through the generic shit and then we can, you know, fucking reminisce. Whatever, and shit. But uh, <laughs> so this is Jesse. Um, grew up. Uh, so, Jayster, where were you born? Uh, fucking Sequoia Hospital, man. Fucking oh, yeah. right up the road here. <laughs> Finally, somebody with me. Everybody else was born in fucking Kaiser. The last five or whatever. All my wife was born at Sequoia Hospital too. It's oh, okay, crazy. hell yeah. So fucking, you know, but yeah, man. All my kids were born at Kaiser, but fucking, I was born at Sequoia, man. Yeah. Fucking saw a lot of family members die there. Fucking just yeah. all kinds of shit, you know. My grandma died there too. Right. And you're nineteen. Right. You're nineteen seventy three, right? Seventy two. The end. December seventy two. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'm, I'm technically i guess it's 72 but really it's more like 73 because it's the end of the year you know <laughs> <laughs> i'll take that hell yeah and then uh so what school did you go to in redwood uh i went to selby lane in the, for fucking elementary until about third grade then i went to henry ford then i went to kennedy in sequoia didn't do long at sequoia you know i was fucking doing stupid shit and <laughs> <laughs> you know, school we'll wasn't for me at that time i guess you know i feel you <laughs> yeah for some reason i thought you went to john gill i thought you and your brother went to john gill at some uh, well my brother went to john gill because my mom lived right actually right behind john gill so That's my brother thought. went there for a few years Okay. And uh, he was friends with Zach and, yep. uh, and, and that's kind of how I met Zach and shit through my brother. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I totally remember that. And because uh, Zoomer was friends with your brother too, because I think they played sports together and all that. Yeah. I remember Zoomer. He used to live on the corner of fucking Veloda and Redwood. Right. I remember his dad and them from baseball. You yep. know, yep. Somehow I, I just vaguely remember all that shit. You know? Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. And then, uh, Let's see so and then so you you went to all those places and then uh you know when, when did you because i know you did a lot of skating back in the day um, yeah i mean that was like my first fucking uh the drummer from discontent was my neighbor on crompton so he was the one that kind of fucking tim curry he was the one that kind of like i'd see him skate by and shit with fucking spray painted shit on his board i was like fuck <laughs> what's that you know what i mean oh and, yeah and that kind of got me into it. And I used to fucking hang out with Doug. I don't know if you remember Doug Woofrich, but he he was my fucking one of my partners I used to skate with back in the day. Okay. And um, but you know, in high school, I kind of just kind of drifted away from that. Always, I still to this day have a fucking love for skateboarding. I still okay. watch fucking you know, YouTube videos and fucking it, it, it just for whatever reason, whenever I'm depressed, I throw on some fucking skate videos and that shit just gets me out of that shit. You know what I mean? So right. I'm constantly a fan, you know, yeah. uh, but I, I that was like my first love that kind of introduced me to a lot of other shit, you know? Yeah, it's ingrained in the DNA. Exactly. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm a big this- dude, too, bro. And I would love to skate and do all that. My kids started skating and whatnot. And so, you know, I get to live vicariously through them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The skate park and whatnot. And they could do their thing. But uh, I'm too big. If I fall, I'm going to fall. <laughs> <and break something. laughs> I can't. I can't live that way. Hell yeah. I mean, when my kids were like fucking nine, like I took them to baseball, look at baseball. And I saw all the fucking parents out there. And I was like, dude, I'm not doing this shit. I bought them a skate, went to skate works, fucking bought them a skateboard. And I mean, I used to take them to the park fucking daily. And we just, I mean, that was like the fucking happiest time of my life. You know what I mean? And watching them progress and get good. You know, they don't really skate anymore, but fucking, you know, it, it's in their DNA too, you know, like oh. it's, it's a weird thing how like skating will like, you know, it like opens you up to shit to kind of like lead you in, in where you're supposed to go almost, totally. you know, it's kind of strange, but. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, so 
I remember you from skating, you know, back in the day, and then you went to Sequoia and, you know, you did your thing. And then, so I remember you, you had a class with me at one point and you came into class and you were all vatoed up. <laughs> you had grease back hair. You had one of those like soccer jersey or sorry, <coughs> football jerseys. I was like kind of like cut through so you could like see it and all that. Oh shit! I don't yeah. even remember that. But. <laughs> you know, so I was like, damn, fool, this fool's all vatoed up and shit. So, what's the story with that? Well, you know what's kind of crazy is I guess I don't know, man. I think it started with like suicidal tendencies, right? That okay. little fucking cholo fucking look. And I always thought the Cholo shit was like the illest shit. You know what I mean? I just, the way they look, their style, everything. And then I, I started hanging, you know, when I was skating like eighth, ninth grade, I started hanging around with my boy Pens One, shout out to Saul Korea. But I remember him. he kind of like opened me up to all that. And then it was just, man, I just fell in love with fucking Mexican chicks. So it was like, <laughs> and it was like, they didn't want to have nothing to do with a skater. You know what I mean? It was just like. They they wouldn't even look at me. They thought I was the devil or something. So I was just like, <laughs> fuck, you know, and I don't know. But that's just kind of how that happened. You know what I mean? Uh, just just like, especially living in Redwood City, right? You kind of just, you're, you're with just a lot of different type of people. And, yeah. and uh, my whole thing was, you know, just once I got it, I started fucking getting into drugs. It was like, that's just kind of the way I went. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Uh, no, I feel you. But but I always had love for skateboarding and fucking, you know, punk rock shit and all that bullshit. You know what I yeah, mean? Oh, yeah. Always had mad love for that, mad respect for that kind of shit. But, you yeah. know, that that's but but at the same time, that kind of opened me up to like graffiti. Mm -hmm. It opened me up to like uh, uh, hip hop and DJing because I started DJing. And that that's kind of where all that shit really began for me. You know what I oh, mean? Okay. It's like, um hanging out with all those cats, learning how to mix records and fucking just learning that whole thing that I, cause really back in the day, like even graph, it wasn't really like a, a thing that, you know, that, that like white kids did, you know what sure. I mean? I mean, I know there was a lot of white kids in history that did it, but at least out here, it was kind of different, you know, it was kind of like a hood thing. And, uh, um, you know, so I just really got attracted to that right away. You know what I mean? Like for whatever reason, you know, but it is what it is at this yeah. point, you know what I mean? Oh, but, but yeah, that's kind of how that all came about, you know, going okay. to school and then just like partying and fucking hanging out with different dudes and, mm -hmm. and, and being like, fuck school, let's cut school. And then next thing you know, we're at Hoover school getting all fucked up, <laughs> all these crazy fuckers. And, and, and that's just kind of how it fucking all transpired. You know what I mean? Oh, that's sick. Hell yeah. Um, and then, so you said you were, you were chilling with them and you started getting into mixing records and all that. Like, who were you? Who'd you start out with? Um, my first person I ever fucking DJ with, it started with me and Casper. I don't know if you remember Cat. You remember Casper? Yeah. Fucking uh, little Casper. Um, yeah, he, he his brother, Tony, took me to this dude's house. It was a DJ. And I was like playing him like some seven second shit. You know what I mean? And he was like, oh, wow, that's just hella sick. And But he had like turntables and I had never seen that before. And I was like fuck that's kind of sick you know what i mean and wow. and and that kind of opened it up so me and casper we had like these cheap real 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 cheap turntables you know we'd like grab one from this person and that person and had like a realistic mixer we'd go to like b street music and fucking buy records and 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 you know a lot of miami bass and you know all that weird shit that was fucking going on back then you know what that's i mean weird. and just trying to mix sounds and and just learn but yeah he was kind of the first one and then you know, I started progressing a little bit, you know, and, and met other people, um, just, you know, kids that went to Sequoia, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just DJing and fucking, and, uh, but it was all kind of disco shit. You know what I mean? It really wasn't like hip hop related. I really didn't know too much about that until I met Stash Five. Okay. And I don't know okay. if you remember Stash Five, he came to Sequoia when he was a senior and, and I don't know if you remember, he like organized that DJ battle and fucking. Oh, okay, like, I didn't know that. And he had like, you know, he did a lot of, he had a lot of graph shit. And I was just like, and he told me, he was like, dude, you guys are fucking discos, bro. You guys don't know <laughs> what the fuck you're doing. And he like, hell, he was like, honestly, instrumental in, in kind of just like schooling me to like open my eyes to see like what the real shit was and what the fake shit was. Like, I didn't really know, you know what I mean? Like, okay. I thought if that shit was sick, it was sick, you know, but he was like, nah, dude, it's about the fucking letters. It's yeah. about this. And, the, and like the DJ style, like uh, I remember one Friday, 
him and uh, 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 DJ Rise. I don't know if you ever know DJ Rise from TMF's uh, uh, Daily City. He's a fucking really dope DJ. Like, we all went to Studio 47, and they had, like, these fucking gold chains and, like, these airbrush shirts and shit they would just look like straight b-boys and we were like making fun of them you know what i mean like we didn't we were just like what the fuck is this but like those dudes were like really instrumental in like opening up like what the real shit like i would have never really known that there was really like a fucking right way if it wasn't for them you know what okay I mean? you know? Yeah, yeah no stash five was in one of my classes i don't remember what class it was and he was only there for like a semester yeah yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason we got into talking about because salt and pepper, uh, whatever their famous song was. Yeah, uh, yeah. Push it. <laughs> push it. Yeah, and we we talked about it, whatever. And then I found out that who he was, and he was in TMF or whatever. <clears throat> he only went to school for a little bit, and all of a sudden he was gone. So, yeah, uh, yeah. and I have one picture from Psycho City that that he he did up uh, towards the back on top of, of a little fence thing yeah he did and a bunch of other people did but uh yeah yeah i totally remember that so that's fucking sick that he actually you know you got with him and fucking that kind of got you into djing or whatnot well yeah well well, well i mean his he had peace books bro with like tracy 168 throw-ups in it and like yeah. he was going to new york at that time you know what i mean he was like he he liked fucking new greg nice and shit before he even rapped he was oh, wow. like he was like yeah he he had like mad connections and that dude like really fucking sat down and schooled me you know and he okay. uh, obviously by making fun of us you know what i mean at first sure. you know what i mean yeah. like but yeah remember that piece he did at the black hole that green piece with the fucking shines i don't even remember that sh i've been like trying to find a picture of that that's like the illest fucking piece i remember like almost done in that spot you know like may i do you remember that one it says stash five it was like right when you came in it was right on that against the so you saw it right when you walked in it was so. right on that lower wall it had like, it was like a green piece okay. like with greens it had like fat ass like phantom cap shines all fucking perfect i remember being like just blown away Damn. like fucking dude like this is i bet you reno's had a had a picture of that too and yeah reno's i i, I want to say he might i think i might even have seen it from him you know okay. I mean? to be honest with you now that i'm thinking about it but uh yeah because he had pictures of everything yeah he did you know but yeah but stash that that he was kind of my my connection to Big. to everything i mean i i, I remember uh bizarro came down and lived he he lived with saul uh pens one mm -hmm. and so like we would hang out like every day and like i told him i wanted to start like trying to learn how to paint and he was the one that actually took me out the very first time like oh, wow. i had already been painting doing little stupid bullshit but i didn't really know you know i was just trying to bite sales shit you know <laughs> and uh i i had no idea i thought they were using fucking tape i mean i didn't fucking know what the fuck they were doing yeah. and then uh uh bizarro brought me out and just really was like nah this is how you piece you know you do your fucking fill in you do you did blah 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 and then after that it was like that it was over you know what i mean for me i was just like fucking addicted you know let's go hell yeah <laughs> uh, the shirt i'm wearing yeah no i see that shit <laughs> where did you get that one man i'm, I'm just you. oh fuck I, for that I, time I that we even... skated in menlo park uh, oh i brought you one what's that I yeah, must yeah. have brought you one. Yeah, right this on. one, and there was a purple one as well. Oh, and, fuck, and then I got dude. that sixteen twenty eight factor uh, CD that you gave me. I still have it too. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Right on, so, I rock this every once in a while. <laughs> That's fucking. Dope, had people dude. like, <clears throat> you're in four hundred eight right now. You ain't from Redwood. Am I? Like, Come on, son. <laughs> forever, man. You Hell, know what I mean? Uh, fucking forever, dude. It's in your blood. You know. Totally. Yeah. DNA yeah, yeah. type shit. Um. So yeah, so you so you started DJing and all that and whatnot. Um, like, you know, what is it? So like, you probably started making beats and whatnot at some point yeah. in time. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. you were getting loops from stuff or like or from like, just pretty much records. You know, I mean, I remember the right. first time I think I went to the fucking library, bro, and like got like some John Coltrane and some right. just some jazzy ass shit. I think I you know. But what happened is, is I started kicking it with, um, I, I told myself, see, what happened is, is I got, I was on drugs for, really, you know, it's funny because you you fuck up for like three years of your life and everybody remembers that shit for the rest of your life. Right? <laughs> so it was like 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, I was heavily involved with drugs and hip hop kind of brought me out of that. The graph brought me 
away from hanging around all that brought me to the city. And then I told myself, you know what? Cause I had sold all my fucking uh, turntables that I had gotten in high school and I had a four tracks and I had sold all that shit basically, you know, just, just needed money. Mm-hmm. And, um, I told myself, I said, you know what, man, I'm buying my turntables back and I'm just going to fucking really try to like fucking learn how to, I knew how to mix and shit, but I didn't really know how to scratch. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, you know what, I'm going to learn how to fucking scratch. Like that's going to be my focus. You know what I mean? And ironically, everything hip hop for me comes from daily city. I don't, you know, I'm from Redwood city, but like daily city was like the fucking, I learned graph from there Uh graph, you know what I mean? Fucking DJ. And then there was this dude, his name was Coop. He was a Puerto Rican dude. He was a black dude, but he was Puerto Rican. The first black dudes I ever saw speak Spanish. You know what I mean? Uh He had cousins come out from New York and they were speaking Spanish. And I was like fucking blown away. I was like, what the fuck? Like we we were kicking with them little mechs and shit. And they were like speaking Spanish. It was a trip. But um, he had a little uh, uh, a friend, uh, uh, like a kid that lived next door to him. He was like 15 years old. His name was Kevin Ricks. Shout out to Kevin Ricks. And I remember one day I went over there and he had his 1200s out. And this fucking kid was fucking just destroying it, bro. He had like a James Brown record. He was scratching Get On Up. And he was just like, fuck, it sounded like DJ Scratch or DJ Premier. And I was just fucking just completely blown away. And I told myself, man, I'm going to have this. I'm going to fucking learn from this little kid. You know what I mean? And he was the one that kind of like opened that up, uh, the scratching side of it. And through that, I met Ari, who uh, eventually, you know, was one of the members of this fucking rap group I was in. Hmm. He was like, you need to buy a sampler. So I went to fuck. There was a little DJ store on Fifth Avenue. I don't know if you remember that little DJ store, but it was right uh, before you went across the tracks on Fifth Avenue. Okay. And uh, this dude, Hoel and fucking, uh, I forget, the Omar, they used to own it. And they used to, like, sell, you know, it's like back when fucking you had DJ stores and flea market. You could buy, like, DJ equipment and shit. Huh? And um, I bought a sampler there. And the sampler, that kind of opened it up for me. Once I got the sampler, it was like, you know, uh, fucking, that's it. And then, you know, Kindred, me and Kindred were kind of started lightweight kicking it and Kindred was like, yo, man, let's fucking do some rap shit, you know? And then Kindred was throwing me all his plutocracy records at the time because I've always been like a mad fan, you know? And I was like, fuck how they put all those little fucking talking snippets and all that shit. I was like, dude, that is the fucking illest shit. That really hella inspired me when we started making beats early. And I think the first time we ever made anything, we went to your house after. Okay. Recorded a tape and me and Kindred, do you remember that day? Me and Kindred came over to your spot. I think so. Uh, you were right? super fucked up. I remember being like, damn, Carl's fucked up. <laughs> you were like super gone, bro. And In like, the garage? yeah, it was yeah. that. It, 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 one of the songs was was from that tape that, you know, we eventually put out that little, oh, okay. fun, little tape, you know. Oh, yeah. um, but, but yeah, so I don't know fuck if I'm going all over the place with nah, this. Nah, but, nah, it's but, all good. This is great. <laughs> I love but, hearing You this. know, Kindred, he, he, that motherfucker was like, super inspirational you know um like i remember when we first started doing when i started doing graph again he was the dude that like we would go we'd be in the tunnels together in the city the two the tunnels and fucking you know what i mean like we go to reno's house and he actually introduced me to reno's again i knew reno's in high school but i i lost contact with him and he reno's was living downtown redwood city kind of behind i don't know if you remember behind sadini's in those apartments yeah behind uh, romeo pizza yeah, exactly. And Kendra brought me over there and fucking, you know, and, and it was just like we fucking, you know, we just were like, damn, let's go paint. And so we were always like at Coors trying to paint. Uh-huh. And then it was just kind of, you know, progressed into the rap thing, you know, and Kendra was doing this crazy ass, fuck, you know, fucking ill ass fucking grindcore shit. Uh, but you know, he had like a lot of fucking ability. He had the ability to rap like he could just like sit down and do something, you know, and he would like actually do it. And, uh, and, you know, and, and then that's kind of how I came into the beats, you know, through that, you know what I mean? And just looping shit. I mean, everything was just looping, you know, we didn't, we just had a four tracks and a sampler. We didn't have like an MPC or a sequencer or anything like that. It was just like one loop is the fucking track one, the sample is track two, the rhyme is track three, the scratch is track four, you know? And that's kind of how it all fucking began, you know what I mean? And, uh, 
but yeah, Kindred definitely was the fucking shit. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm, you Absolutely. know, it's like, uh, he, he's a weird dude. I remember him in high school when I first met him, he was this little fucking little kid. And I think <laughs> you had Leif on and he said he looked like the fucking Mad Max, you know? And I was just <laughs> like, dude, that was like the perfect <laughs> analogy for that kid. Yeah, you know? exactly. He was just like super fucking crazy little fucking wild ass kid. And he was like running around showing me a DRI tape. Cause he knew yeah. I like used to, you know, go to shows and shit at the farm and shit. And he right. was like, fucking check this one out i think it was like four of a kind you know i wasn't really into dri at that time you know what i mean he's like sure. showing me all this shit and like and, and and when i hooked up with them it was just like a fucking really 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 good positive thing you know totally. he was good he was good friends with rudy and fucking they had he had hella brown weed you know that makes yeah. weed back in the day so i was like <laughs> always going over there fucking grabbing weed and then we were painting yeah. and uh yeah, so like even the factor, the one six two eight, like started. It was actually Kindred and Saul. You know what okay. I mean? That that was like kind of like, and it wasn't like we called it the factor. It was just like the address was one six two eight Redwood, so it was like the one six two eight. You know that's what I mean? Sick. And uh, but yeah, man, that's there. It is. I talked too motherfucking much. Nah, dude, that that is what, that's what it's <laughs> all about. No, yeah, and you got me into my next question, which was going to be. Uh, when did 1620 when did 1628 factor start like yeah well kind of like I told you. go ahead go ahead no my go, bad, my bad. Go, no it's all right and, and go through like the history because you know you you name the, the starting members and then you know just go through a little bit more of yeah so how master came into it and Juan kenobi and all that so basically brewmaster i grew up with roy you know in, in junior in high school mm -hmm. in art you know Juan kenobi rest in peace man um I grew up with those dudes, and and one time before I was even doing music, I was just on drugs, bro. I was all fucked up, and I saw him one night, and I jumped in their car. It was him, Art, and Art used to have this uh, Isuzu Trooper, this white Isuzu Trooper, and I jumped in, and we were driving around, and fucking, he was playing me their own music, and at that time, like, I was, like, super hyped on that Illmatic album. I was, like, fucking blown, and I could not believe what that, they, that was their music, you know? I was, like, whoa what the fuck you know what i mean and so i knew them before but then we kind of never connected and then i started doing music with kindred met ari and ari would come over to my house because he lived across the street he lived on Junipero. i lived on redwood okay. and so he would come over and practice my house the 1628 started as a practice house because he was going to Spex's house like yeah. trying to you know dropping like heavier shit at that time you know what i mean and my house was kind of like he was like i'm just gonna come over here to practice but eventually you know like we started making some gems you know what i mean and then all of those dudes wanted to come to my house so he brought yeah. brewmaster and and um the first ones were to, to come were brewmaster and juan kenobi and we recorded a couple tracks and it was just like oh man we're gonna keep doing this and then specs eventually came through <laughs> Right. And we would have like these dope ass sessions at my house, you know what I mean? Um, and it would be like hella motherfuckers in the room would be super high. And those dudes would just freestyle and I'd record them. And then we just started making shit. And he was, Specs was making shit. I was making shit. You know what I mean? It was just uh, like, and the funny thing is, is all those dudes kind of fed off each other because they were super competitive, which I really wasn't aware of at the time. You know, I just wanted to like make some ill shit, you know what I mean? So they would always be trying to one up each other, which basically benefited me tremendously because I got the best shit, you know, from yeah. dudes, you know, which is kind of funny, you know what I mean? Like, like that whole thing of making it in, in just a fucking bedroom. I mean, it was like... Sure. It was nothing, you know what yeah. I mean? It was absolutely fucking nothing, which is all oh, no. I mean, I still fucking sell tapes to motherfuckers. You know, it's just fucking right. hilarious. It, it's, it's hilarious to me almost, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> someone would fucking want to fucking listen to some of that shit. You know? it, yeah, I mean, it's history, though, you know? Yeah. No, I feel Bay history and, and a lot of those fools are just had super talent. And then you came in with the talented beats and shit, too, like. Even way back then, it was it's just sick shit. Right on, man. I appreciate that shit. That shit a lot, man. And you know, and the it youngsters really nowadays that are, you know, that are kind of coming in the scene or whatever, you know, that are kind of in the music scene with the, you know, the West Bay shit as well. They're all fans of IMP and, you know, and all that shit. But yeah. then they got to hear some of that shit. Now, you know, they're just like, dude, I want more. I want more and shit. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. No, that's kind of why I put, you know, uh, re-released a lot of that shit because... 
I would get emails, you know, from people from fucking all over, bro. And they would like send me little messages like, man, dude, I appreciate it. And it kind of really touched me in a way. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, man. You know, this is my walk on this planet. I'm going to fucking put it out for, for whatever reason, you know? And, and, uh, um, I, I, I just feel super blessed that I was able to actually do that at my life at that point in my life. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it was a really, 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 it's probably the funnest time. I mean, we were going to the fucking radio station, KZSU, yeah. like, you know, staying there till two, three. And I don't know if you remember dope styles fucking show. We'd be there like fucking three in the morning. Like, dude, that was like out of, out of outside of having children and, and, and all of that, that was like the absolute happiest time of my life. You know what I mean? Like fucking kzsu fucking smoking fucking hella weed and oh. fucking just crushing mcs and fucking you know that feeling of getting on the air and like djing and spinning like you know like i had dj'd for fucking weddings and all kinds of stupid shit but nothing really compared to that for me fucking even cool. though it was just so short-lived you know what i mean but I, I i fucking i super super appreciate every opportunity i've had you know okay yeah. that's so dope hell yeah um so what other groups were you part of besides uh, just i mean like well well with music so what happened with me so this is what happened with me so i finished the factor and you know i was doing a lot of drugs and i had a when i was 24 there's actually one song on the low cash chapter that was recorded when my wife was giving uh basically it uh you know going through contractions in the front room and okay. i had people at the house trying to record you know what i mean because i called the, ho the hospital that day and they were like oh no she's preparing for labor it's uh -huh. not real you know what i mean so i was like all right guys fucking come over right we were getting <laughs> fucking like ah you know in the front room and after i had a kid you know what i mean um i had to get my life together i was on a lot of drugs my wife was like look man i'm gonna fucking leave your ass you better fucking get your shit together you know, I mean, I basically dropped out of high school. I had nothing going for me. I thought I was going to fucking DJ and paint graffiti. At that time, that was just absolutely not a viable option. Sure. Shortly thereafter, it, a lot of people that I know, it became a very viable option. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, and so I, I went to church, man. You know what I mean? My, I, I, I totally just which I'm very, very, very glad that I did. Like, I feel like it's the best decision I ever made to go, but it was the absolute best decision I ever made to leave at the same time. You know what I mean? It's just, there came a point where it was like, you know, there's like an old Buddhist saying where it says, man, you know, you, you have this boat to cross the river and some giant told me this actually giant, you know, fucking giant graffiti writer, giant. He said, you know, the boat is used to get over, but you got to leave the boat on the other side so someone else can use it after you. And I felt like, you know, I just uh, when I was going there, I just started to see a lot of things that I really wasn't. I was like, this is not what I'm about. You know, it was a lot of hypocrisy and just a lot of shit that was like, damn, like you're hella worse than the worst dope fiend I know. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I got to get out of this. Right. And um. And I did, but it, it during that time, so I had a hiatus from everything, but this is the funny story or the funny point from all of this is that, so I gave hip hop and everything up at that moment for my kid, right? Like my son was born. And then when my son was nine years old, I come home one day and he had downloaded FL studio on my computer. And, I, and so I felt like, you know what? I gave it up for him and he gave it back to me. And he it's like the universe saying, Jesse, this, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And so uh -huh. I started fucking with beats again. You know, it was like 2007, 2008, you know. So I had like probably almost a 10 years where I didn't really touch anything. And uh, and then, you know, just um, I, I met, a, I, I did a, that project with Specs and, and, and that, that kind of that, that it was the one that uh, Mega Cut released. We did that, and uh, that 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 was like just like fucking never having access to unlimited tracks on a project, and now I have like whatever tracks I want. So I feel like that's just like super overdone. You know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of fucking a million sounds fucking everywhere because like I could do it, whereas before were so many limits. You know what I mean? Excuse me. And so we put that out, and then. Uh, Shortly after that, through my buddy Code, uh, my respect, Math Props Code, ACK, he introduced me to this dudes, and, and, and they were from Frisco, but at the time they lived in Daly City. 
and uh, again, Daily or San Bruno rather, San Bruno. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over to their house and Code had painted their whole backyard, all their fences. That shit was yeah. super fucking dope. It was like pieces all over the fence. And I go back there and like, we're chilling. He's like, oh yeah, I make beats too. And I'm thinking, you know, Bay area, typical, you know, 808, you right. know what I mean? Just typical yeah. shit. And I go in his garage and he's got an SP 1200. And he's got a fucking uh, a mic standing right there and he pushes the fucking SP and it's just the grimiest shit I've ever heard. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Who the fuck? <clears throat> Shout out to Fats. You know what I mean? Is fucking my boy Fats, Eric. And through him is how I heard Flash, uh, uh -huh. Flash Clayton. Yep. And, and I had heard him and I was like, he reminded me of what Specs was. You okay. know what I mean? Like, like, like that. <laughs> That energy that I had with Specs back in the Factor days, when I heard this dude, even to this day when I hear him, I still think of like old Specs. It's it, I know that sounds hella strange, but that's just to me that's what it was. Sure. And um, I heard him and I was like, man, I gotta I gotta fuck with this dude. This was 2010, and wow, uh, you know I didn't really get to fuck with them. I fucked with this other dude, Joey. He was a uh, shout out to Joey Nova, X9, Hitanos Mathematicos, fucking uh, Doctors Under the Influence. I did this little project with this dude and, and you know, fucked with him. And then I ended up fucking with another dude who I met through there, which is Cochise. Uh, he's from Redwood City. And so he lived in Redwood City. So we kicked it. So I did some shit with him. We did a little project and uh, yeah, but fucking that's just kind of how it, how it broke down, man. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, you answered you know, trying question. to do something, you know what I mean? Hell no, you, you answered all the shit I was about to ask you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I had one that said, uh, you got together with flashes Clayton. How did that come about? But you, you yeah. already, cause yeah. I mean, in my opinion, he's right now probably the best MC in I mean, the Bay. Dude, he's dope. He's fucking hella dope. I mean, to get on Rome Street's album, yeah, you got to be dope. And yeah. somehow he got he's like you know, friends with all those dudes, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's like friends. And the thing is with him is that dude's talent is so fucking raw, bro. Yeah. Like that dude is like when I heard him, I was like, nah, I got to somehow. And, and, and it just seemed like nothing happened. And then right before the pandemic, 2019, um, I bought some of his pro he released that Wolf Moon album. I don't know if you've you've heard that, the one he did, that Wolf Moon, but I I bought that. And then he he contacted me something about the order. And I was just like, yo, this is blah, blah, blah. I was yeah. like, let's do some shit. And you know, I was like, yo, I'll break you off something, you know what I mean? Because he's a, he's a grown man. And I don't expect any grown man to sit and take the time that it takes to make music without getting some type of reward unless you're my super good friend you know what sure. i mean like sure. I, it's just the way it is bro yeah. um i i just fuck as grown men it's like dude our time is the most precious thing we have and sure. you know and 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 we started working and and he knew a lot of these other dudes like skunks and fucking lissandro and lissandro's a fucking dope ass motherfucking mc dude he's from fucking east coast and he he's he's ghost riding for like rock marciano and like all kinds of motherfucking dudes the dude's really good right. and so he he was able to like kind of throw those dudes into it you know and open me up to all this other shit which you know mad props and mad respect mad shout out to him too like he he that, that dude's been like a super inspiration for my life you know what i mean like he's like telling me like dude you fucking should never fucking quit you know what i mean because like i'm like man i'm this old motherfucker what am i my my i got three kids they're fucking all grown you know what i mean like sometimes you feel like an idiot you know like to be very honest i'm gonna be honest with you but but over this last couple years i've been learning for myself like this is this is what you know you, i believe in god this is what god has given me to kind of help me get through this life and if i don't have you know something like this it just i i couldn't see really trying to fucking exist you know what i mean like it's kind of weird yeah. but yeah flash is the fucking shit for sure hell yeah no when i heard that album you guys did together she was so yeah. fucking dope yeah no yeah. i appreciate that shit thank you Dude, man. for reals it was just a great combination and then uh, I was with uh, fucking uh, Paco getting tatted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some tracks, um, some beats and shit. And then he's like, here, check this one out. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, damn, Premiere. I'm like, what's up? 
I heard like three of them were like, damn, <laughs> Jacer's gone to another level. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, mean, I don't feel that way. You know what I mean? Like I, cause I live such a secluded life, bro. Like I really genuinely don't feel that way. And I really genuinely appreciate th- those, you know, those kind words. Bro. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then yeah, Paco's a talk- shit. That's another fucking really good homie of mine. You know? Hell yeah. He, 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 that dude has, he came through for me when I was very fucking low in life, you know? Okay. And uh, took me out and painted with giant and fucking, I was just like, when I felt like a fucking the lowest piece of shit on the earth, you know, he said, nah, 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 come over here, bro. And I got mad love for Paco, man. You know, he's tatting my son too. I, I have a son, my middle son, he's been doing a sleeve on him. Oh, nice. It was fucking like, you know, uh, it's been a while now, but you know, like doing it the proper way, like, you know, going in for sessions and, right, right. you know, and it's fucking, he's phenomenal, man, yeah. Paco. You know? Yeah, he showed me a lot of his stuff, and yeah, he's he he's up there <clears throat> for sure. Fuck yeah, and and you know what, that dude, that 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 dude, we haven't seen the end of that dude for sure. That motherfucker is gonna be. I I think we haven't even seen the best shit he's done yet. You know, personally, that's what uh-huh. I believe. Uh-huh. I think I think the universe got something real good in store for that motherfucker. You know, oh, yeah. for real, for real. Right on. Um, <clears throat> and then you dropped that uh. The Jaster's uh, Beats collection. What was it called? Oh, yeah. Well, basically, that was just like, so that was a bunch of old beats that just kind of were laying around okay. that I felt like, you know, because my whole thing with putting out music is it's not really for me so much. It's just more for like my kids and my kids' kids, if they ever have kids, you know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, this is what I did. You know what I mean? And I felt like there were a few real special gems on some of those that I didn't want to like just kind of waste some of the first on the volume one, the chops loop, it was called chops loops and lost time. And it was called that because, you know, it's lost time, right? You spend hours and hours making all this shit. And sometimes you don't do nothing with it. You know what I mean? So I just kind of put it out there, but some of them were from uh, a project that, that, that was done that, you know, I kind of was just like, fuck, man, I'm not really feeling the project, you know what I mean? And so, but I did, I really liked the beats and I, and so I kind of wanted to kind of just keep that to myself and put the, all the beats together, you know? Um, and that's kind of all that shit was. I'm working on another project with Flash right now. As a matter of fact, he sent me one of the verses today and, oh man, I'm fucking, you know, for me, it's like when I have to listen to a song over and over and over, I know it's working right. You right. know what I mean? And 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 fuck, dude, that dude never ceases to amaze me. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it's like, but yeah, those were just like fucking throwaway beats. Not really throwaway beats, but beats that I felt were were pretty good, uh-huh. but never really, you know, were, were put to the proper use, I feel. You know? Okay. Hell yeah. I Hell got yeah. one more. One, there's supposed to be a volume three coming out, but. I think I'm going to make all those fresh, you know, like that's going to be the volume three is going to be like, okay, I'm going to make it for that. Whereas the yeah. other ones were already made, you know, when I, when I put it out. You no, know? That's sick. So. Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> and then let's do your top five albums of all time. Okay. Well, <laughs> fuck man. I, I would say, um, it's, it, that's a hard fucking thing. Like I've been it thinking is. about this shit since you it asked is. me, dude. And I'm just like, Cause there's so much music that I like that I really fucking like that I listen. And it could be any genre. It, yeah. No. 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 But I I feel like the list that I kind of broke it down to was it was based on influence. Okay. Yep. I say the first one is fucking Black Sabbath, Masters of Reality. You know what I mean? Like that album is just like fuck. I mean, what can you say? You know what I mean? Like just the fucking my favorite track, Lord of this world. That's like my favorite shit on there. Just like Ozzy's voice when he comes in is just like fucking the recording is just fucking incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, I say my second because, you know, when I was in the hardcore, it was funny. We, we used to go to the farm and I used to go to the farm a lot with Max. You know what I mean? Um, fucking Max Ward. Um, and there was a time we would look in the fucking the, the date book, right? And you'd see the farm had a little ad and it was like MDC, MDC fucking every, I probably saw those fuck that group 20 times at the farm, right? Yeah. We'd get on the 7B and go up there. And I and I and I ha- and I listen to this, I, I still listen to this album to this day is the fucking the MDC uh the millions of dead cops album you know what i mean with the fucking cops on it fucking um i mean that album is just so ahead of its time in terms of content i mean 
um the fucking the music is fucking balls to the wall i, I mean i bought it there used to be a record store right down the street from my house i live by sequoia huh? fucking the record factory and yeah. uh Leif talked about Scott Hill who worked there, right? And I know that dude was the dude stocking those records, you know yeah. what I mean? And so fucking I went down one like when it was in the winter sometime, like when I was in junior high and I fucking bought that record just based on the way it looked. You know, right. when you were a kid, you'd go out and just be like, Totally, it looks sick. I'm gonna <laughs> buy that one. And I bought that one, and, and it's just an album I still fucking listen to. Business on Parade, probably my fuck the title, the first track on the fucking album. Fuck yeah. My fucking dopest fucking track. So that's number two. Number three, I'd have to say fucking Gangstar, Hard to Earn. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a premier. Like, premier's like my favorite producer of all time. Dude. Just because I felt like he had the DJ skills. You know, like a lot of producers made dope ass beats, but really couldn't DJ. And I felt like he was a fucking fire ass DJ, you know, and and that's kind of how I came through. I remember like trying to like, you know, there was a time where I could scratch mass appeal exactly like fucking, you know, sure. like, you know, with the dip, 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 with the little triplet and the fucking right. anyways. I, I, so that album and uh, mostly the voice is my favorite fucking track on that song i mean you listen to that i listened to that song today just to refresh everything i was like dude i was like this shit fucking sounds fucking just as dope as fucking anything you know what i mean like that's dude his voice is just fucking timeless you know and um i would have to say after that what i would have to say just because of the impact that it had on my life and and uh is uh Wu Tang entered the 36 chambers, you know. What I mean, tears being my favorite song with that oldie, just the way they flipped it. Okay. Fucking the fucking little keyboard, and you know, it, it, it's just fucking that to me. Like that song is one of the fucking greatest songs ever. When I heard that shit, it was just it was crazy. And then and then the fifth will be uh obviously Nas Illmatic, you yeah. know. What I mean, New York State of Mind being my absolute favorite of all time. Yeah. Hips up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you think about that shit, Premier just makes two loops, basically. You know what I mean? And it's just the fucking <laughs> illest fucking song ever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, at least that's what I think, you know. No, like, absolutely. That Nas Nas hits every note on every beat on that song, yeah. and it's yeah. perfection. Just yeah. it's just yeah. yeah. I have you to can't compare to that, that shit. You know what I mean? Like that. So those are kind of where I'm at. You know what I mean? With with my fuck, because you know, like, and as I get older, I find myself liking like a lot of shit when I was younger. You sure. know what I mean? Like, but but the influences that like shape like my music production and all of it would definitely be that. You know, I've always liked like the way RZA kind of like had like this grimier edge and sampled shit that other people really, the strings and shit that a lot of people, but Premier kind of touched a lot of that too early on as well. You know what I mean? But like, just that, that shit is just fucking, uh, it's, it's like drugs, man. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like the best drugs ever, you yeah. know, it's crazy, but. It's so sick. <laughs> Dude, this is so rad. <laughs> I, I thank you so much for fucking doing this it, oh fuck dude i appreciate it, you even asking me man i've fucking never dude. done no fucking interview about shit so i do i mean you're one of the ogs you know we all grew up together we did a bunch of shit and you know you got to be on here i'm, I don't, what I'm trying to do on this is you know trying to go through you know the the family tree kind of thing of west bay yeah not redwood and then we'll branch out later on you know but we're just trying to get the og shit going on you know yeah man yeah. it's important i think it's important for people to know you know yeah. what i mean not necessarily my story but like the ones you've already told like I, I i when you did those first podcasts like i was i fucking enjoyed those just listening to like fucking billy and fucking you know comex and fucking zach and all these dudes and i don't even really know them too well you know what i mean i know fuck i know them but you know what i mean sure. Uh, it, it, it was just, it was crazy listening to that shit. Leif, especially, you know what I mean? Like I saw Leif a few times at the gas station at the Circle K down the street. Uh -huh. And I would, I'd talk to him, I'd be like, fuck a rock against Floyd. You know what I mean? Because that th their group was like my first experience. You right. know what I mean? Like discontent, like Tim Curry, he fucking lived. There. I remember hearing him play the fucking drums in the fucking garage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with the DRI fucking, uh, spray painted stencil on his board i was yep. like what the fuck <laughs> is that shit you oh. know what i mean like that's the illest shit you know but oh. 
Hell but, yeah. I appreciate you too, man. You know, for dude, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, right on, man. But we we gotta bounce because I don't I don't know when this thing's gonna stop. <laughs> I talk and too I, fucking much anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, thank you so much yeah. for being on here. You know, yeah, and, that, and we'll fucking, you know, everything that I make, I continuously try to send you send yeah. you away and like I'll you do can check it out and whatnot. Oh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much for being on here. Um, yeah, when I post it up, I'll send you a link and all that. All right, my brother. Thank so, you, man. All right, man. You have, have a, a good, good night. One, bro. Hey, and hope the fucking 49ers win tomorrow, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, my brother. All right, man. Much love, Bye, brother. Peace. Peace.